Welcome to Our Town, a 30-minute podcast brought to you by Best Bark Communications, a small but fierce client-centered marketing company powered by decades of experience and well-established business networks. We have a special guest here today for Our Town, a man who knows Our Town and probably knows your town and their town and every town. It's Guido Adelfio from Bethesda Travel, a very, very dear friend of WMAL for so many years. And Guido, what is it? Where did Bethesda Travel start? Good morning, Andy. We did that. Is it more? Oh, we did that? (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for having me. Bethesda Travel started in a dream of my parents. In 1961, my father was working for Air France. And he, he was had doing, been in the Italian Air he Force. He had been in the Italian Air Force. He was trained as a lawyer. They met in Capri, believe it or not, got married here in the States, went back to Italy. I was born back to Canada. I where, went to your place where you were born, if you remember That's that. right. That's true. I loved it. And then we um, stayed a few years in Canada. He got his law degree, came to the States, practiced as a lawyer, then started working for Air France. He was doing very well. And the way I heard it, I was a child at the time. There was a promotion. Well, the French guy got the promotion, and the Italian guy was left sitting at the desk. (laughs) So he said, the heck with this. I'm going to start my own business. And that was in December of 1961. Oh, my God. That's 70-some years ago. Well, not quite, but... uh, Seems like 70 years. Almost 60. Well, we don't... Well, but did he start in Bethesda? In Bethesda, right on Waverly Street. If you're familiar with the Vamoose bus, yes, where it stops on that same block, we had a rented office. In the day, it was the Suburban Trust Bank building. And uh, nearby, you had the hot shops and no metro yet. And uh, Bethesda's really <laughs> you just changed. You mentioned two businesses that don't exist anymore. Correct. Suburban and there was and also a dart drug. That's what happens. And there was a dart well, drug and a grand exists. union. There was a grand union, a lot of stuff. They're going. But Guido... Uh, when he started in the business, it was a different world, of course, and he was on the ground floor of, of what was going to be the future, is travel. Correct. And that, I mean, uh, people who help other people travel. Absolutely. So he was really on the ground well, floor. Well, when he was in university, he had two experiences, actually three. One as a child, his, his uncles had a shipping agency, and they used to bring home, this was a kid in the 30s in Italy, Mussolini was in charge. They used to bring home stamps from all over the world, decorative stamps, Sri Lanka, Brazil, Finland. So as a child, that wakened him up that there was a world outside right. of Palermo, Sicily. Amazing. Absolutely. So that woke up his imagination. And then after the war, he went in the Air Force. And then he was in university. And at that time, he had two jobs. One was, I think he thought he would meet more girls, but he got a job at the fledgling Club Med that started right after the war as a tour guide, taking people, taking (laughs) French visitors. It was called Club Magique at the time. This was 48, 49. Yep. And then uh, he morphed that into a job at the train station in Palermo, assisting travelers who would come in with hotel bookings, tour guides, transportation, etc. So I basically learned at his knee how to do those things that he learned as a child in Sicily in the 40s. Which which was gave him a leg up when he got in business. He knew what he was doing. Positively, he knew Europe well. Oh yeah, he had, he had the people fountain skills. Fountain of information. Absolutely, he understood the airline business, which at the time was very important since he worked for Air France. He was trained as a lawyer, so he understood the legalities of business. So between your mother and father, who and Maggie, your mom, and they gave you the the smarts to to get the, in the business. You worked with him for a long time before. 22 years. And, and they were a great team because my father was the outgoing, the front man, always had a joke. My mother was a little more retiring. She ran and, the business. And she kept the books. She kept everything right. straight, kept track of everything. And What a great team. Absolutely. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, tell us about your involvement, not yours, but your father's involvement with WMAL to me because I was there when we started Bethesda Travel on the air. And, God, I don't know, that must have been in the uh, 50s. Um, no. Mid-60s. Had to be, yeah, it had to be after Harden and Weaver started. Yeah, the way I heard the story was that they were on a plane together to Paris. 
And my father met Hardin and Weaver. He was an outgoing guy. He introduced himself. He got they got to Paris. He introduced them to dinner. I'm sorry, invited them to dinner in Paris. So they made friends. They're passing oh, wine. Yeah, they fair, a lot of friends. jokes. Then they came home, and six weeks later, they walked into his office and said, "We'd like to do a listener trip." Well, that was the beginning <laughs> of uh, honestly. I'm so appreciative to you, Andy, for setting the tone, and to WMAL for putting our business on the map in Washington. It, it was such a pleasure to work with Tony on all the trips that the guys wanted to make, and and I, I was startled by the fact that if after a day or two on the air talking about a trip to wherever, would sell Tony out. would say, we're sold out. We can't take people. anybody else. It was great. We buy two ads and sell 85 <laughs> tickets. <laughs> it was great. But your dad... Your dad went on most of the trips, and Absolutely. then later years. Then, then when I came along, yeah, I started. Yeah, then he started doing, sending you. But I went with um, Hardin and Weaver multiple times, so Barrett and um, Elsie. I went with uh, Bill and Shirley Mayhew, Felix and June Grant, Bill and Chris, Trummel and Core. Uh, we had a lot of fabulous A latiny of name. You know, even Tom the, Gager. It, it, everybody here was involved in travel for whatever reason, and they all used Bethesda Travel. Plus, all our relatives did and our friends did. And it was like a, uh, being a family business, you guys provided such good care of all of our people. So it was a great relationship. Well, thank you. Your father used to ask me to go on the trips. And the fact is, I never, ever accepted a free trip. <laughs> and then I then Guido took over and I'm starting paying. I said, your father asked me free. Why am I paying you? He said, my father's not here. You'll pay. Well, but uh, all these trips added to the lure of WMAL Absolutely. in the market. And beyond that, they could that, come back and talk about it for sure. When they had, when they had um, kind of a gap in the programming because it was all live radio at the time. Absolutely. It wasn't canned, so they were was uh, spontaneous, very exuberant. When they had nothing to talk about, which was very often, what would they talk about? The trip. Absolutely, where they've been and what they did, uh, where they want to go. Um, we got the uh, we did the Oktoberfest one year yeah. with Bill and Chris. And Saint Patrick's we did Day. St. Patrick's Day. Remember that? And I'll never forget being at St. Patrick's Day with Harden and Weaver and Trumbull and Core and this big parade is starting and the first group comes through in the parade. They're from Fairfax, Virginia. Perfect. It was a marching band from a Fairfax, Virginia high school in Ireland, in Dublin, <laughs> right downtown. It was a great, Perfect. great memory. So I'm going to be right back. I'm going to ask you some questions and give you some names. But right now we're going to take a break, Guido. Hi, Tony Sybil here to tell everybody about our wonderful restaurants at Washington Harbor. Tony and Joe's, the best seafood in the city. Nick's Riverside Grill, wonderful chops and steaks. Wonderful views of the Kennedy Center, Roosevelt Island, the Roslyn Skyline. Spectacular. Two bars outside, right on the water. Fabulous food. For dinner reservations, call 202-944-4545. It's really a great experience. We'll see you down at Tony and Joe's or Nick's Riverside Grill. You're listening to Our Town with Andy Ockershausen. Brought to you by Best Bark Communications. Uh, we're back here with uh, Guido Adelfio and Bethesda Travel. And the thing that Guido has pointed out is talking about the few minor things, the businesses are gone, but how the travel industry has changed dramatically in your career. Huge changes. Well, it's, remember, I started, I learned from someone, I was basically an apprentice to someone who learned this stuff when Truman was president. On the ground floor. From the ground floor. So think about the communication, the letter. If you had any money, you could send a telex, telex, and uh, it was paid by the word. So you learned very cryptic way of speaking, and you'd like type a few words, say stop. You'd put words together because you're paid by the word, and uh, you had to learn to communicate in a very cryptic way that was accurate. Well, over time, we started using the telephone more. When I was a kid, to call Europe, you had to make an appointment. You, you wait around on the all line. day, and the phone would come on, and then you'd the operator would be there, and you'd talk with your watch in your hand, and two minutes and 59 seconds, you'd hang up, and that call might cost $20, $30, which was like $200 today. Well, now we think nothing of it. We talk all the time. We send texts. We send emails. Uh, we used to use the mail for vouchers, for checks, international banking. You had all the currencies in Europe. It was a very no complex more. world. Now there's just the euro, the pound, the Swiss franc, a few Norwegian, uh, and um, 
Danish, Swedish, a few odd currencies, but primarily it's the euro. Change everything. But also the change, the industry that you serve has changed dramatically. Whether it be steamships or airplanes or trains or automobiles, they've also changed in addition to your business changing, their business has changed. Totally. The, um, not only that, the public taste, which I'll get to in a moment, but in the day, they didn't have outlet for information. So it was all a commission-based business. So the added value was that we would purvey, at the time, a steamship, believe it or not, steamship schedule, uh, airline schedule, the airfares. It was all mandated by the government. They would send out a packet once a month, and you'd put in the new tariff, put in the new pages. You had to leave through and look it up. Then there was no computer. Then in the kind of and the government set the the prices positively correct? before deregulation. And then in the um, late seventies, you started having a little more computer activity, airline ticketing by computer. Up to then, they were written by hand. Saber. Saber. American Airlines, right? Yep. The World first Span, one I remember. Apollo, they all came in. Um, that was a sea change to the industry. Well, at the time, they called it a mainframe. So you'd have a dummy terminal on your desk with a screen about this deep and just blue, no color. And you'd type away. There was MS-DOS. There was no Windows at the time. Then Windows came. That changed everything. And then the technology of Kayak, Expedia, Travelocity, that was the next sea change. The other sea change was Google and uh, Ask Jeeves, all those access to information. It, it made a huge difference in the distribution of the product. And did they also change the commission uh, uh, for, for agents? Yeah, well, that's what, that's what happened. They added, there used to be added value in us providing information. Yeah. You were like and an employee of the company. We basically, we were underpaid clerks you represented them, to right. the airlines and the steamship. And if you did enough volume, you could make a living. Well, that changed about 20, 25 years ago. Right. And I was very lucky because I didn't love that part of the business. It was very clerical. And you were feeding <laughs> into people's indecision. So to do something that should take four minutes was taking 45 minutes. Well, I'm always on a time schedule. So I didn't love that part of the business. Now that's all been automated. So now as we shifted the business, and I was very lucky, I guess right we're in a great demographic, Washington, our town, fabulous area, fabulous people that respect you as a professional for the work you do. And then I was able to create a new paradigm of added value, which is the customized ah, uh, customized the customized vacation, trip. customized guides, drivers, right. rental car trains, the selecting the right hotels for people. We do a lot of trips for family groups. Could be five or eight, up to 18, 20 people doing a, a huge that, family vacation. That's the vacation. backbone of the business now, the tra group it's travel. It's one of many. The, our bread and butter is a couple. Uh, 35th wedding anniversary, oh, okay. 60th birthday, a uh, family with two or three kids. Another change I've seen in the last few years, a lot of fa uh, families travel with kids in their 20s. When I first started, the 20-year-old stayed home and the parents went to Europe. Well, now that they bring the 20 year olds with them. everybody goes. Yeah, everybody goes. I don't blame them. I wish my parents took me when I was in my 20s, but <laughs> I was home raising man. kids. Have Tony as your dad. <laughs> well, uh, Guido, what about the um, uh, the trip you've arranged for the church? I know you've done some great trips to Rome for the Catholic Church. I've heard about them anyway for Father Ensler and then groups. And when the Pope was here, you were very prominent with the Pope, right? He went by and waved at you? He did. I'm um, <laughs> involved with the John Carroll Society, which is right. run by Monsignor Vaghi. And we've done, we do pilgrimages for them. My subspecialty is religious, especially Catholic pilgrimage trips. Right, into Italy. You're an expert Italy, on Italy. Italy, the three eyes, Ireland, Italy, Israel. That, those are the three eyes. And that's sort I've of- I've been to all three of them, two of them with you. That's good. And then um, France, Spain, different. We do pilgrimages for parishes, uh, as well as we've done a lot of work for the Archdiocese, including Cardinal World, numerous times when he went to Rome oh, with, yeah. with delegations. He goes a lot. And Monsignor Ensler, Father John, who married you? Father John. Yeah. yeah. Now, wait a minute. He married me once. <laughs> other people did the other. Um, Guido, what about... Um, uh, you, you triggered my thought there about the, the, the groups that you take. Uh, do you have any outstanding trip? We've been talking about Cuba. You and I have been talking about it. But the, I think the whole country's been talking about Cuba. 
and it is going to happen. But the timetable, nobody knows. But they're going to open Cuba. To open correct? Cuba. Yeah. Well, they they've pushed the door open a little bit. I think yeah. um, a lot's going to depend on whatever the new administration does going forward. But they just opened up um, direct air flights, non-stops, non-stops uh, from I think uh, ten cities. But not from Washington. Not from Washington. That doesn't make sense. The capital of the United States doesn't have a nonstop. I don't know you what to tell you. You go nonstop to Shanghai. <laughs> but the uh, the other thing about Cuba is, I mean, that's not our main specialty. I've been there. I went there just for curiosity right. last November. I loved it. You but, had to um, see it. Currently, you still need the OFAC license. It's a Treasury Department authorization based on a people-to-people -people exchange, trying to get more common purpose between Americans and the Cuban people. Right. And they've really uh, loosened up those requirements in the last two or three months. Well, we're going to get back to talk some more about our town and where we're going to travel. We'll be right back with Guido Adelfio. Are you retired or soon will be? Is your will up to date? Don't want to leave a mess for your family to clean up. I'm attorney Mike Collins, the guy who sends you those invitations to my estate planning seminar. I'll teach you how to save taxes, avoid probate, protect your heirs from lawsuits, bankruptcy, even the divorce court. Keep your money and your family with our innovative Reservoir Trust. Watch the mail for your invitation. Tuition's free when you register online at MikeCollins.com. That's MikeCollins.com. You're listening to Our Town with Andy Ockershausen. Brought to you by Best Bark Communications. I'm back again with uh, Guido Adelfio. We're talking about travel. The question I just wanted to ask and tried to ask Guido during the break is, has he heard from Richard Branson? Has he anybody booked the flight, fly me to the moon, whatever? And um, have you heard from Elon Musk? He's going to run his own ship. You know, the government didn't cooperate him, so he built his own spacecraft. No, I understand that. And just shot one coming. up there. It's something you told me once, Andy. One thing is for certain, everything always changes, and it does. <laughs> it's it's it amazing. Does. Now we're talking about space travel, and like you say, people are buying. For tourists. What are they paying? I have no idea. I heard that the down payment is around 200 k to, to get on the flight, list. To get on the list, and you don't even know when the flight's what, going right. to be. But Elon Musk is good at that. He he sold two hundred thousand cars that hadn't been even built yet, so. <laughs> and they still haven't been. He's and they good didn't at return that. the money. Correct. Well, he's you know what people he's <laughs> he's out there somewhere. You know, I I read about SpaceX. They just shot another another uh, rocket off with a group on board. I don't know how many people it was to the space station, and uh, he pays for that. But he's a genius. But but Guido, what else do you know? See in the uh, travel business as. Uh, as lucrative for the future because you can't give it away. Uh, well, well, one thing, again, everything airlines. always changes. Airlines, there have been huge changes in the airline business. Apart from the product distribution, the aircraft itself. You've got the 380, 550 passengers. You've got the... But they've uh, cut back production. Did you know that? Yeah, they've cut back, but uh, that's a, that, they're getting that's competition from what? From right. the Dreamliner, the 787, which is the Boeing jet, which is... Not quite as big, but it's very large, and it has an incredible fuel economy. So what they're starting to do is, you know, they have low cost. We had in the day was People's Express, and in Europe they have uh, EasyJet, Ryanair, all of Ryan those. Ryanair, big carrier. Well, those are starting to infiltrate the international markets. You have Norwegian or Air Norway. Really? That's trying I never to heard do, of Air Norway. You have Wow that goes to uh, through Iceland for. I don't know, $250 to Europe? It's unbelievable. So Iceland these, was always a stop going to Europe. Correct. And you had to stop there, and that that got you the- In the uh, day, you flew to Luxembourg right. in the day on right. Iceland Air. Well, now there's a new airline called WOW, W-O-W. I love it's it. It's a competitor wow. to Iceland Air. Incredibly- Where are they based? They're not based in Iceland, though. Yeah, in, in Keflavik. Right oh, my God. <laughs> wow. I've always wanted to go to Iceland. Maybe we'll get into that later. Guido, what about uh, travel in the U.S.? What is your most popular? Do you book many local travels or most of it out of the country? We do almost all international. We have a little bit of um, demand now and then for California, yeah. which, again, we don't specialize in it, but for our known clients, we help them out. Hawaii, uh, Western Canada, the Rockies. Uh, Grand Canyon? Occasionally, occasional Caribbean trip. But, again, our main focus, is we're Eurocentric. 
and uh, you're, you're competing with the big travel companies, or you're almost like a boutique company, correct? I've been very lucky to be able to create a boutique niche of my own uh, knowledge, my own experience, client base, hotels. I go to Europe eight or ten times a year to see hotels, try them out, make sure we like them, uh, meet the guides, make sure I've got the right drivers in place, etc. That's a huge advantage. It's, yeah, it's they hard know work. what you're doing. It's hard work. It's a lot of energy to fly to Europe for three days, do stuff the whole time, and fly home and head right back to the office. But I love it. <laughs> and um, the beneficiaries of that are... World traveler. Our did clients. you fly on Turkish Airlines I recently? I did, in uh, February. Was that the inaugural flight? No, we went to Istanbul. They've been running that flight for a couple of years. I think it's off now after what happened. But Yeah, I know. They've had... We were there in February. What happened to your French travel? Is it still active? People are looking at alternatives. Uh, some are still going. A number are still going, but a few are either booking away or... We had one client last week cancel France are going to Spain because just because they had anxiety. But um, again, our main clientele goes to Europe. Our main country in Europe is Italy. But beyond that, we've had... Uh, well, why did you send me to France this spring? <laughs> <laughs> to stay on the promenade that the guy said, Gina, there's going right to be a there. truck coming down here beyond her. Your hotel was right there. Then I know, right in front of it. Right, I know that. True. No, we... we um, have seen a little bit of a shift of people's patterns. I can't really quantify it, but this year we've sold a lot of trips to Switzerland, a ah. lot of trips to Ireland, Iceland, Scandinavia. So these are countries perceived to be safer than after what happened in France. Right, There's yeah. a lot of worry about France. Uh, Turkey, unfortunately, is a fabulous country, beautiful, wonderful people. I don't imagine that's going to resurface as a destination for us just because... It's going to be a long time before it comes back. Our clients aren't looking for people are instability. Nervous. They want a stable, easy place, i.e. Switzerland. Now, all of these millions of listeners we have, if they want to make a trip somewhere, how do they, <laughs> how do they reach Bethesda Travel? Uh, very now, easy. Now, they used to be calling, but no more. Now you've got a machine, does it, right? Absolutely. You never well, you can go on our website, which is very easy. It's What's Beth a website? Oh, I beg your pardon. <laughs> BethesdaTravel.com. Uh, you can email us. It's Charles, C I A O, like Chow Baby, C I A O, at BethesdaTravel.com. And we also have a telephone, if you can believe that, 301 656 1670. I love and, it. And I'm a throwback. You talk about the town. I believe in the live answer. Oh, I do. I, I, I love to talk to people. Our town, you know, it's trying to do business with the airlines impossible to get them on the phone. And they, they plan not to have anybody answer the phone. No, and half the time after 45 minutes, once you get through, you wish you hadn't got That's to right. through. They said, we can't help you. <laughs> and I used to love Gershwin until United put it on the on hold. Oh, my oh, yeah. God. And then they got the bit, if you leave your name and number, we'll call you yeah, back. Yeah, and then they never call you. And then they never call you. Well, we no. did the live answer. We're old fashioned. It's the airlines, not that Guido. Guido, it's been great having you. You're the best. Thank you, Indy. Is there anything else you want to plug, Guido? Well, I would like to return to the idea of, of the how the world has changed. Oh, I'd like to hear that. In terms of the distribution and what's coming. So, first of all, I have no crystal ball. I can only say that 25 years ago, when I sensed that the airline distribution system had reached its limit, and I was part of that, I went into a new way of, of running my business, and I kind of guessed right, which I'm happy about. But what's coming? I don't know. But s some things that surprised everybody were, one was Airbnb. Airbnb, in about the past three or four years, has had a huge effect on the entire hotel industry. Huge. What is Airbnb? Airbnb is like the Uber of hotels. So oh. you have people that own an apartment or a small boarding, like a, what we used to call rooming a pension house? or a rooming house, or and they let out rooms. So people can book online. It costs a fraction of what a hotel room costs. A lot of times they're doing what Uber is doing. It might be a condominium that doesn't permit short-term rentals. So they give you a short-term rental in the condominium. They're playing catch me if you can. The, uh, <laughs> that's the downside of that business. The upside is 
that people that like to travel that way, a little more boutique bohemian style travelers, get to live in a city and feel more like a resident than as a visitor. And the new generation likes that. A, they don't want to spend a lot of money. And B, they love to be that is amazing. in a I place for a that. longer time, five, seven, the ten years. The millennials have got to jump on that. They love it. They love Gotta it. Love and, it. But it's not only the millennials. I was in Barcelona recently, and there was a convention of telecommunications. It's a uh -huh. Europe-wide convention. They have, I don't know, 80,000 delegates. Half, these are business people, technicians, business people, and engineers for telecommunications. More than half of the delegates to this convention stayed in Airbnb apartments. That's We're, an amazing stat. Just in four or five years. Previously, they would have all 100%, well, probably 90% stayed in hotels and 10% stayed with relatives. With relatives, right. So that's a sea change in the industry. Nobody saw it coming. It just caught on like wildfire. So Uber did so the same. same with Uber. Identical. Absolutely. So what's coming next? Uh, for affluent people, you have fractional jet ownership. There's going to be, I, be, I believe, and there's a new Honda jet that's not very expensive. I think it's two or three million for the jet. That there, I'm sure they're going to be entrepreneurs putting that into an Uber style private jet transportation. And yeah, then, because, yeah, who would have thought what's happened that uh, you can buy space on an airplane that may or may not be available to you? Like right, you and you like share with other. Right, it's like share, a ride share, share ride, right? For 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 jets, and and there are people that experiment with it that try, but somebody's going to figure out the app and the way to do that and to make it affordable and give it enough flexibility so that you're not going to left stranded, enough security in uh, the transaction that you feel it's reliable and also cost effective. Very important that it's cost I, effective. I recall vividly, Guido, because we were part of the Eastern Airlines uh, operation at the time when they went to the air shuttle from Washington to New no, York. The, no reservation. The, you just no showed reservation. up. No reservation. You just show up. They came down the aisle and you took your credit the card. Plane. What it did was save the businessman the trouble of, of getting a reservation, getting worrying about getting there early. Because it didn't make any difference. Even if no. you were late, you got on air, you got to Correct. Seat. If your business, if your meeting ran late, or if you got out early, or whatever, I don't give know. You do they still do that on the shuttle? You know, honestly, I don't know. I don't either. I used to ride the shuttle. We you know, we had a flight on Eastern Airlines, the daytime shuttle. WML broadcast every hour on the hour, twenty four hours a day. The the story of Eastern Airlines. What were they flying? What were they not? In on the flights. The one, two, and three o'clock flights were twelve dollars. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and, and I'm telling you, they it would go down the aisle now. with the with the credit card. Right um, no, no the swipe plane. machine. Don't don't. They would run your card, fill it in, you'd sign it. They would have a whole stack of slips at the end no of the booze, flight. No booze. You got off the plane and you were there. Yep. But this is something now, almost like it was a change. But then it changed back. They're not doing that anymore. That'll come back in a different form. I predict with the. Uh, the, the automatic way, the, the new way well, of the communicating. Apps, well, the, the apps have also changed everything because on the way to the airport, you can look at your flight, change the flight, pay the fee, select your seat, get your boarding pass right on the app, walk up to the gate, hopefully you have TSA pre-check or global on. entry, easy easy um, uh, entry through TSA, walk on the plane and get to your destination. Well, Eastern used to hold, they used to hold one side of the, they were flying constellations, they would hold one side that Didn't was a long go. time so ago. So you could get on the airplane. Yeah. They, the other side was warming up. The propeller. And you could get on because yeah. they were trying to save putting another plane on. Yeah, of course. Remember, if you missed the plane by one minute, they you, had to fly into the next New York. Hour. Oh, is that how it worked? That was great. Pub oh, yeah. they, and when and one guy they would fly to New York got a million dollars worth of publicity. <laughs> but that's how the world has changed, Guido. Absolutely. I don't know what's happening. Now, how about steamship? The same way? Well, steamship, now they don't use the word anymore, but it's um, cruise lines. And cruise lines have, have hugely increased the size of the ships, the, oh, the number of the ships, the volume, enormous increase. They're also very luxurious. And even like region, RSSC just put out a new ship called the Explorer, supposedly the most luxurious ship anywhere. It was just inaugurated this earlier this month. You also have the boutique cruises. They're small. Windstar, like Star Clipper. The They're fun. Uh, sea Cloud. Right. Um, then you have Le Ponant, you have a, a lot of selection. But what's very interesting in the cruise lines, 
and I'm not a cruise expert. I just know it by osmosis. Well, you have to know it. But NCL, this is a luxury market. NCL, which is a mid to low brow cruise line, has a brand on their ship. They have specific decks, like a concierge level on a hotel, that is super luxury. So you have, like in the old days, on the if you saw Titanic, you had first class and you had steerage. All well, the way down to the bottom. There they have something beyond first class on NCL, which is really ironic that that level of cruise line would put something super luxurious on their ships. That's NCL. incredible. Well, Guido, you're a fountain of information. Now, you're not leaving town anytime soon, are yeah, you? I go Except to, you're being run out. No, I go to Italy on the 7th. You always are going And somewhere. then to no Croatia. Dates. We're going to a cruise in Dubrovnik <laughs> up and down the coast. And well, uh, Havar, Split, all the islands, Montenegro. I'm trying to collect new countries. He's a world traveler. Have you noticed that, Ken? <laughs> Guido, you have been great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we don't know when we'll have you back, but we will. I hope you got all the plugs in and the phone number and everything because we've got to, but this has been uh, our town and a special, special man, uh, Guido Adelfio, and his lovely niece, who's uh, here from Georgetown Nora, University. Nora, thanks for coming. And well, thank you, Andy. <laughs> it's a privilege seeing you again and being on. Guido, remember this with my next voucher. I will. Money. <laughs> I certainly will. We're we'll getting be back. rid of the vouchers. We have, vouchers. We have apps now. <laughs> Thank you. This has been Our Town with Andy Ockershausen and Our World with Guido Adelfio. Thank you, Andy. You've been listening to Our Town Season 1 with your host, Andy Ockershausen. New Our Town podcast episodes are released each Tuesday and Thursday. We welcome your comments and suggestions on how you like the show or who you'd like to hear from next. Catch us on Facebook at Our Town DC or visit our website at OurTownDC.com. Our special thanks to WMAL Radio in Washington, D.C. for hosting our podcasts.